Christopher Nkunku's hat trick against Manchester City started it all for him this season, and now he's ranked amongst the best attackers in Europe's top five leagues to start this 2021 22 season. Yes, Christopher Nkunku is currently playing some of the best football of any attacker in Europe, and in this video, we'll absolutely back that up with some numbers. Hey, I'm Adrian, and welcome to this quick look at the career thus far of Christopher Nkunku, as well as the numbers that prove that he is in some of the best form of not only his life, but better than most attackers in Europe. Let's get started. Christopher Nkunku was born in November of 1997 in the Paris suburb of Lagny sur Marne, which is famously noted as the same area that Paul Pogba was born to and grew up in. He managed to establish himself as a dominant player early on and was selected to join the prestigious French National Academy Clairefontaine, where much of France's elite players pass through and are developed. And in Nkunku's year, he was attending Clairefontaine along the likes of Marcus Thuram, of Borussia Mönchengladbach, Alain Saint-Maximin of Newcastle, Amin Harit of Marseille, etc. The year after Nkunku was there, none other than Kylian Mbappe passed through the Clairefontaine Academy. At the age of 13 in 2010, Nkunku would move to PSG's junior side, eventually making his first team debut in 2015 under coach Laurent Blanc going on to appear six times in the 2015-16 season across all competitions. With each passing season, he got more and more minutes, but with each passing season, more talent arrived at the club, meaning more competition for places. Well, Nkunku's development was admirable at PSG, and he went on to make as many as 22 appearances in Ligue 1 during the 2018-19 season with the midfield talent that PSG has alongside the likes of Mbappe and Neymar ahead of him in the attack. He was forced to make a decision in 2019. With Thomas Tuchel arriving at the club, with PSG being a club that had leaned closer to purchasing talent over letting youth products have a chance, and Kunku fell into the category of players that were disposable. Tuchel ultimately decided that Julian Draxler was the preferred option over Christopher Nkunku, and thus Nkunku's mind was made. He would have to leave PSG for more opportunities alongside another major talent in Moussa Diaby, currently at Bayer Leverkusen. So yes, both of which ended up in the Bundesliga, a hotbed for young talent that needs more time to develop. And Kunku was close to joining Arsenal, actually. According to sources, his transfer there fell apart due to the clubs not being able to agree on a value for when his loan would become a permanent one. In the end, he chose the Red Bull project via Leipzig. At this point, we all know how good the Red Bull clubs in Europe, you know, Salzburg and Leipzig, are at developing talent, as Leipzig is becoming a preferred choice, alongside Borussia Dortmund, for the young talent of the league to grow into their game. But for PSG, it was another young talent that had to seek minutes elsewhere, yet another one for them. Speaking to Canal Plus, Christopher Nkunku said, quote, The arrival of Tuchel made me think. The fact of starting a season without really knowing what role you're going to have, it's quite complicated. There comes a time when you come to the end of your contract and you have one year left. Either you extend or you leave. I made the choice to simply leave. And as far as hindsight can see, it was the right choice. After signing with RB Leipzig, Nkunku emphasized that he had made the right move for his career, assigning more importance to playing time than being associated with some of the top talents that PSG were bringing into their, you know, under construction super team. Speaking to the media in 2019, Nkunku said of Leipzig, quote, it was the club I needed. I've rediscovered the pleasure of playing. I feel that I'm blossoming on the pitch, that I'm a bit more liberated. The more time goes on, the better I am. Now I can say that it is better to leave your comfort zone than to grow taller. And grow he did, as his first season will have caught the eyes of many, and perhaps will have made those Arsenal supporters quite sad that the club didn't push harder for the young Frenchman. The 2019-2020 season saw Nkunku settle into the league immediately with a goal in the Bundesliga opener against Union Berlin. In all, he scored 5 goals in 32 appearances, but the assist numbers were just insane, of which there were 15 during his maiden Bundesliga voyage. That's not a bad start, is it? Before his move to Saxony, Nkunku said, quote, I've been told that I need to work on my killer instinct because I sometimes don't try my luck or I might miss the odd chance. This is important. I aim to work on this because attacking players must be decisive. And work on that he absolutely has done, especially during the summer of 2021. With Didier Deschamps as the manager, and Cuckoo is yet to get a call up to the French national side, and the summer of 2021's Euro 2020, that's confusing to say, was no exception. 
While left out, Nkunku worked all summer with a personal trainer to improve on his already explosive speed, his strength, and put in long hours at the training pitch to sharpen his finishing. However, with new manager Jesse Marsh arriving at RB Leipzig, Nkunku and the rest of the squad's start to the season was stunted a little bit. Julian Nagelsmann famously plays with a three at the back formation, that's his favorite formation, while Jesse Marsh tried to implement an attacking 4-2-3-1 formation that was more reminiscent of what he had utilized at RB Salzburg previously, closer to it at least, than Nagelsmann's three at the back formation. The change didn't work well for Leipzig, yielding one win, one draw, and three losses in their opening five fixtures in the Bundesliga, as well as a 6-3 drubbing at the hands of Manchester City in the Champions League. However, one high point in that heavy loss to the English champions was the hat-trick that Christopher Nkunku managed to score, a hint at what he was capable of at a precursor as to what was coming this season. Marsh changed from the 4-2-3-1 to a 3-4-2-1 formation, following that City match, allowing for Nkunku to play as an inside forward alongside Emil Forsberg and behind Poulsen. The change paid dividends, as Leipzig thrashed her to Berlin 6-0 with Nkunku scoring twice and assisting once. In their next match against Bochum, he scored another brace, this coming after he had scored once again for Leipzig up against Club Brugge in the Champions League. This role for Nkunku, the inside forward playing off of the striker, has allowed Nkunku to use his best assets, his speed to get in behind the defense, his passing and combining with his teammates to set up for others, and his newly developed ability in the finishing department to finish off his own chances. Nkunku was behind only Karim Benzema and Victor Osimhen when it comes to goals scored in September of 2021, with six to their seven, on par with the talent of Mo Salah's stature. But Nkunku has scored 9 goals and assisted 3 times in 10 matches across all competitions thus far during the 21-22 season. Remember, his best numbers were 5 goals and 16 assists across all competitions, so he's well on his way thus far. And quite clearly, the focus on improving his finishing is working, as if the goals don't speak for themselves. But Nkunku's rubbing shoulders with the elite in Europe now. Hopping onto FB Ref for the data reports, when compared with all other attacking mids and wingers in the top 5 leagues, his shots on target per 90 is in the 96th percentile. He's in the top 4%. In fact, he's in the same percentile when you combine his non-penalty expected goals and his expected assists, meaning he's amongst the most elite attackers in Europe based on current form. And there's more where that came from. His goals to shot ratio per 90 minutes is in the 91st percentile also, while his passing hasn't let up either. When it comes to key passes per 90 minutes, Nkunku is in the top 3% amongst players in the top 5 leagues. His 2.82 key passes per 90 place him in the 97th percentile. His expected assists per 90 at 0.29 put him in the 93rd percentile. As for his goal creating actions per 90 minutes, this would be his passes, dribbles, etc. that lead to a teammate scoring, whether he directly assisted or his dribble played a role or his pass played a role, is in the 94th percentile in Europe at the moment. And finally, his delivery from dead ball situations is one of the best and most consistent in the top five leagues, with Nkunku sitting in the top 2% of players, the 98th percentile. With all of this, it's clear to see that Nkunku was just missing his own killer instinct to elevate his game even further. He's seemingly done so, as we're now starting to hear his name in the papers much more often than before, with a potential reunification with the coach that snubbed him, Thomas Tuchel, potentially on the cards if he is to join Chelsea. Regardless of where he ends up, assuming he continues upon this trajectory, he'll be one of the most sought after attackers in Europe come the latter half of this season. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the career and recent achievements of Christopher Nkunku. If you did, do be sure to subscribe for more or drop a like on the video to make the algorithm happy. But besides that, my name is Adrian, thank you for watching and enjoy your day. Take care.